Hey, welcome to this mini lecture on color and contrast. Who is this in the following picture? Any guesses? Any guesses? It is Caligula, who was the Roman emperor from the years 37 to 41 of the Common Era, also known as AD. Uh, he used to be known as being a, a nice noble moderate emperor. Later on, not so nice. You can read here. Um, now you see not just the one bust, you see two. One with, uh, that's painted on the left, one that you traditionally see in the museum on the right. Why would you have two busts? Think for a moment. Why do you think you'd have two busts? The one on the left is painted. It's the original way it would have been. Well, it would have looked back when it was originally made. The right one is an aged version. So if you have the left one for years and years and years, it eventually starts to look like white as it becomes eroded. The colors fade and stuff. Uh, scientists prove that sculptures were painted in bright colors in the year 2000, such as they were on the left. That was kind of an imagining of how Caligula would look when it was originally made. This is proved by scientists by scanning these busts with infrared, x-ray, and UV light. What is the implication? Why would I even show this to you, given that we're dealing with color? Uh, for centuries, the standards of beauty were the pale marble and bronze sculptures of ancient Greece and Rome. Uh, as a result, the aesthetics for Western sculpture were based on a misconception. In short, when we go to a museum, we equate beauty with being a pale marble or bronze sculpture not the original colors that they were in. So we sort of default to this white standard for beauty. What are the following two objects? Try to compare, contrast them. There's the first one. Take a look, take a look, take a look. Number two, take a look at that as well. Uh, the one on the left is a 2000 calorie meal. It is known as, as you can see on the package, if you can see up close, it's a humanitarian daily ration. Uh, the right is a cluster, on the right is a cluster bomb. It can kill anyone within a 50 meter radius. Hmm, they look a little similar, don't they? Uh, so back in 2001, the U.S. dropped cluster bombs in Afghanistan in a war they had against the Taliban. One out of every 10 cluster bomb units failed to explode. In contrast, at the same time, as bombing was going on, food rations were also dropped over the same country. As you can see by these pictures, the packages and bombs had the same color, yellow, and typography. Uh, what do you think is the underlying problem alluded to by this sort of quick rendering of this fact situation? Basically that failed bombs posed a renewed threat to those on the ground. And uh, so as a result, some people who were desperately looking for food would want to get the humanitarian daily ration, uh, but instead would unfortunately approach a cluster bomb. If this was a situation you had, how would you have addressed it afterwards if that had happened to you and you're working for the U.S. Army? As you can see here, what they did was this. Uh, this is some uh, some things that were dropped off in a plane, as you see on the right. Some A bunch of uh, leaflets that were dropped. This gentleman on the left is looking at the leaflet, reading it, trying to figure out what is what. Uh, he reads the leaflets, find out that, finds out that the packaging of the bomb, of the food ration is in fact correct, the bombs is incorrect, and then they go on their merry way and have a sherry, a nice family meal with uh, their family. That was a short term solution to drop these leaflets. A longer term solution, which is probably more effective, uh, they eventually, the government uh, realized this mishap in November 2001. They changed the food ration color from yellow to this beautiful pink here, and they had the leaflets, as I just showed in the last slides, that helped to explain the difference. Uh, unfortunately, by that point, over a million food rations had already been dropped by then, and as a result, people who desperately wanted food were a little bit sheepish because they knew that it could be a cluster bomb. Uh, given this, this chain, these dropped, uh, this dropping of leaflets, these changing colors from yellow to pink, are the problem solved, or are there any other remaining potential problems with this solution? Given that I posed the question, of course not. Uh, in Afghanistan at the time and, and still today, there's a problem with illiteracy. So if you drop leaflets with text explaining a situation, it can be very difficult. As a result, if you're making a visualization, you want to make sure that you account for things like color, typography, and literacy levels in the people you're appealing to. That was uh, Color and Contrast. Thanks for listening. I look forward to seeing you next time.